In this example, we're going to take various pieces of clip art that's available with this software and using a simple step-by-step -step process, we will look at creating the finished plaque that you can see here. So let's just go and close this down and then we'll go and create a new file. So for our job size, we're going to go the width of 10 inches, height 10 inches also. We'll set Z0 off the top of the material block and to go with the material thickness of three quarters of an inch. I'll set my XY datum position to be in the centre of our material. I'm going to go with a modelling resolution of high and then for my appearance I'm going to go with a Canadian maple. We'll press OK there. And we'll go over to the 2D view control and we'll tile our windows vertically that way I can see the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right hand side. So now we're going to start importing components that we like the look of and we're going to size and position them until we're satisfied with the general layout. And so this stage is purely about the layout, we're not worried about the heights of the components that are overlapping each other. So let's go into the modeling tab and one way that we can import components or 3D clip art is by using the import component or 3D model option. So if we go into that, and in the Lotus Cottage underscore files project folder, we're going to open the panel 80 that's in there and then press open. Now with that selected, let's go and alter the size of that. So we'll go into the drawing tab. We're going to use the transform objects tools and we're going to alter the size. I'm going to keep link XY checked in this case. That way when I alter either the width or the height, it's going to automatically alter the other one in proportion. So we're going to go in for the width here and we'll put in a value of 7.35. Press apply. You can see that's automatically been updated there. We'll close that down. And so another way that we could bring clip art into my session is by using the clip art tab. And so I've already installed the clip art that comes with the software and you can see here that I've already added in those subfolders into my library folders by using the add folder option here. So I'm going to go into the plants and fruit option here and I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to take this lotus and if I double click that it will automatically put that in the centre of my job for me. Whilst I'm in the clip art browser, I'm going to go into the decorative option and just scroll through these until I find a flourish that I like the look of. Okay, so I like this flourish, flourish 227, and I could look at dragging that in. So I can either drag or double click on those thumbnails and it will bring those into my job. And so now we're ready to alter the size of these. Again, I'm not concerned with what's going on in the 3D view at the moment in terms of the heights. I'm only concerned with the layout. Once I'm happy with the layout, then we can move on to the next stage and start thinking about the heights of those components. So I'm going to take the Lotus here. We're going to go into the Drawing tab. I'm going to go to Transform Objects and we'll set Selected Object Size. I'm going to make the width of this a little bit smaller, I'll make that 4 inches. Again, link XY checked and then we'll apply that. You can close that down. I know because I double clicked the thumbnail to bring the lotus into my job that it's in the centre. So I'm going to take that to put it into transform mode and if I hold down shift when I move that up it's going to keep that in line for me. So I'm just going to move that and roughly position that in place like so. I'm going to take this flourish here. What I'd like to do is align that to the centre. So I'm going to use the Align Selected Objects option. I'm going to align to the centre vertically and horizontally to the material. So let's select that option there. Close that and I'm going to take that, hold down Shift and just manually drag that up. I'd like to make this a little bit bigger. So with that selected, let's go over to Set Size here and I'm going to give that a width of 9 inches, press apply, close that down, we'll take that, hold down shift, I'm just going to move that up a little, and then still holding down shift, I'm going to select the lotus and the panel so that they're all selected, I'm going to go into the transform objects options and use the align selected objects, I'm going to align that to the centre of the material and then close that down.
You can still see with these white gaps here that I may need to alter the position of my flourish. So I'm just going to click into the white space here to select the flourish. I'm just going to move that over to the right using the right arrow key and then move that up using the up arrow key. So now that's completely covering the lotus flourish there. So now that I can confidently say that my layout stage is now complete and now I can start to alter the components so that the overlapping areas have the correct heights. And so we're ensuring that the components are either in front, behind or blending into their neighbouring components. Now for this example I'd like our panel to be in the background and the flourish and the lotus to be in the foreground. So let's just maximise the 3D view and then we'll start altering the heights to ensure that we get uh, those correct overlaps. So I'm going to start with the panel, so we'll select that and then we'll select that again to put that into transform mode and then I'm going to use this option here to bring up the properties form. Okay, if I wanted to I could just drag that out of the way and move that up there, we can see the current shape height is just over 0.2. So let's have a look at reducing this down. So let's try 0.2 and press space to enter that in. Okay, so that's not enough to clear the uh, flourish in the lotus. So let's try 0.15 and then press space to enter that in. Again, we're still the uh, lotus and the flourish are still being obscured partially by this panel. If I just uh, tilt my view here, you can see it's fairly flat. Now I don't want to reduce the height of my panel anymore, so I'm going to leave that as that is, but look at increasing the heights of the flourish and the lotus instead. I can keep this form open and then just go in and select my next components. If I select the flourish like we've got there and then it will update the properties form and it will tell me some information about that particular component. And so we can see that's just over 0.3. You'll also notice there's a lot of green shading for this component and that green shading is the software's way of telling you that there's areas of that component being obscured by other components within your job. And so ultimately for this example what we want to do is reduce the amount of green shading that we see in that 3D view. We want that flourish to be prominent of that panel so we don't really, ideally we don't want to see any green shading at all. So we'll look at other ways that we can increase the height of that. So we could look at using the shape height. So let's increase that to be around 0.35 and press space to enter that in. Okay, so you can see that that's emphasised a bit more detail in that flourish. However, we're not completely clearing the bottom area here. So another way that I could add height to our component is by adding a base height. So that's just going to add a base to that component. So I'm going to specify a value for that base. So we'll put in, say, 0.1 and press space to enter that in. Okay, and we can see that's not too bad. If we just zoom in, we can still see that we have this green area here. So let's just go and put in an extra value in there, say 0.125 and press space to enter that in. And now we can see that that is now prominent of the panel and I'm happy with that. Let's just take a look at that from the side. You can see where we've added in that base height, it's added quite a bit of height to the top end of our flourish here. So I'd like to look at decreasing the shape height of the top area only of our component. I'm happy with what's going on at the bottom here. So we're going to look at using the fade option. So let's just put that in Z. And I'm going to use the fade option, so I'm going to check that and you can see that I have this option available for me to use now, the set anchor option. So I'm going to select that, so I'll use the set option there and if I go into my 3D view you can see that my cursor has now changed to an anchor with a number 1 next to it. So what we need to do here is specify our first anchor point. So the first anchor point is the side of the component which you'd like to keep the same. So I'd like the bottom to remain the same, so I'm going to click here and we can see now that I have an anchor with a number 2 next to it. So this is the area or the direction of the fade that you'd like to apply on that component. Like I said, I want to apply a fade from the bottom to the top, so I'm going to click anywhere above the component. So I'm just going to click here 
and that will do that a default of 50% so if we just take a look at the side there I'm just going to uncheck that to remove that so that's without the fade and that's with the fade so you can see it that's reduced that by 50% at the top there and then the height of the bottom is okay so I'm happy with that so then we can go and close that down I'm going to go and tile our windows vertically and we'll look at the Lotus. So another way that we could look at altering the properties of a component is by going into the Modeling tab. I'm going to use this option here to change the properties. So this has given us the uh, full component properties form here rather than using the short one in the 3D view. And so again we're going to work our way through the form, altering the heights here to ensure that the lotus is prominent of the flourishing of the panel so we don't see any of the green shading here. So the shape height, let's look at increasing that, we'll round that up to a quarter of an inch and press space to enter that in. Okay, so that's not too bad. So then I could move on and think about adding in more shape height or just go and add in a base height. Now I'm happy with the shape height so I'm just going to go with the base height. I'm going to put it in the same value that we put in for the flourish. So we're going to go with an eighth of an inch, press space to enter that in and you can see that that's lifted that up nicely. However we just have the bottom area of that lotus being obscured by that flourish. So I like the height that we've got at the top here, I don't want to increase that anymore. So I'm happy with the shape height and I'm also happy with the base height. So what I need to do is just look at adding height to the bottom area. And so to do that I'm going to use the tilt option here. So if we select that option there, again, similar fashion to how we worked with the fade, we need to set an anchor point, so I'm going to use the set option. Now as we're working in the component properties form, we set our anchor point in the 2D view, so you can see I have this cursor here. So I'm going to click my first point, which is at the top, as I'd like to keep that the same. I just want to look at tilting the bottom area of my lotus. So I'm going to click for my first uh, anchor point and we can see that that's brought out this pink dotted line here. So then we choose the direction that we'd like to tilt that component. So I'd like to bring that up from the top of the component down to the bottom and then I can click at the bottom of that component and then we can go over here and we set the angle that we'd like to increase that to. Okay, so you can see that's at 1.8, which isn't too bad. Uh, what I might do is just round that up to 2 degrees, then press space to enter that in. And we can see now that that is uh, completely clearing the flourish and the panel that we've got there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we'll just put that in Z. Whilst I'm in the component properties form, I do have the option to alter the appearance of a component or selected components, and this will help me to visualise how I may finish the part. So with that lotus selected, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select the flourish. And then I'm going to go into the appearance here and use the drop down menu so I could use same as parents that will set that to the material we originally set when we set up our job at the start which was Canadian maple. I could use a solid colour if I wanted to so if I wanted to visualise how I might paint this I could go ahead and put in a gold colour here and it will change that in the 3D view there for me or I could go back in and select both of those and then say use material so if I wanted to say if I wanted to use cherry and we could see how that would look also so that helps me to visualize how I could finish that another thing that we could do to get more of a realistic uh, view of how this might look is by if you go into the 3D view just click anywhere in the 3D view we can use the view option up here and then I have the option to use shadow shading so that's just going to give me more of a realistic look on how the shadows may look on our finished part so now that I'm satisfied with the finished layout and I think that the heights all look good where the lotus and the flourish are now sat proud of the panel thanks to some of the adjustments that we made within the properties form. The last thing that we need to do now is add text to the panel and ready for us to v-carve when we come to do the toolpaths. So we just close this properties form down and we're going to go into the drawing tab.
I'm going to use this option here to draw text. So in here we need to write in the text. So I'm going to put in here Lotus Cottage. So I'm going to put that in two separate lines. I'm going to use a true type font and then we're going to use the um, drop down menu to select the font. This is the font that I'd like to use so I'm going to select that one. I'm going to make my text aligned in the centre there and then we're going to go with a height of 0 0.8 press apply and then we can close that so you can see that's been brought into the centre there so then I'm going to select that and I'm just going to hold down shift and I'm just going to manually drag that down and then if we just maximise the 2D view and then I'm going to go over to zoom selected so we can go and look at that text. So you can see we have a rather large space between the word lotus and the word cottage. You can also see that the T and the U are a little too close together as are the T and the T in the word cottage. So we're going to look at using this option here to edit text spacing and curve just to get a nice amount of space in between uh, the two words and between those letters. So I'm just going to zoom out slightly using the scroller of my mouse. Then we're going to go over to edit text spacing and curve and you can see that I have two arrows that are pointing towards each other. And so if I click that's going to bring the word lotus and cottage closer together. So I'll click again, I might click again. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's go in between the T and the U. Okay, so you can see that we have two arrows pointing at each other again. I don't want to bring them close together, I want to move them further apart. So I'm going to hold down Shift and you can see now that my arrows have changed and they're both in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to click outwards click again and I might just do that one more time ok so we've got a nice space between the T and the U there and I might do the same for the T and the T so again I'm going to hold down shift so that the arrows are opposites and then I'm going to click click again I think 2 is just fine so let's just go back to zoom to fit and we'll go into normal select mode I'm going to select that text and I'm going to select that again to put it into transform mode, hold down shift and just drag that in position. You can see it's a little bit too big for the space we've got so I might just edit the spacing again between the lotus and the cottage. So let's go back up to edit text spacing and then we'll just bring those a little bit closer together, maybe another three more. Ok so that's ok, we'll just go back into normal selection mode now, select the lotus cottage text, hold down shift and just drag that down. Ok so I'm happy with that. So let's just tile our windows so we can see the 3D view as well. And so that concludes this tutorial where we've looked at how easy it is to create a new model using the free clip art that comes with the software. We used a simple step by step process where we started off by importing the components, we laid those out using the transform objects tools until we were happy with the overall layout. We then looked at altering the heights of those components so that the overlapping areas are either in front, behind or blending into one another. And so now we have a model that's ready to go and create some toolpaths. So let's go and save this. So we'll go to File, Save As, and then in the Lotus Cottage project folder, we're going to call that Lotus Cottage Model. Press Save, and you can access that from the project folder.